everyone and welcome back to my channel Melanade Beauty. If you don't know me by now, my name is Angela and I am a thrift addict. As you all may know, I love thrift shopping and going to Goodwill almost every day, picking up items for my home. And sometimes they're not that cute. And I know you're thinking, well, if it's not cute, why are you buying it? And it's because I see potential in a lot of stuff when I'm thrift shopping because I love to DIY and recreate new looks with old items. So not only am I buying the cute stuff, but I'm also buying the ugly stuff. So that's why my place looks more like an antique thrift store somewhat. But that's okay because it is my true passion. So in today's video, I am going to be turning all of my ugly thrifted items into beautiful pieces for my home. And as always, I'm going to be saving my best thrift flip for last so stick around for that if you haven't already please consider subscribing to my channel we just reached over 5,000 subscribers which is awesome and amazing to me I would love for you to be a part of that family as well now let's get started first I just want to show you this beautiful day that I am filming on at my work desk it's such a beautiful view and to get started, we are using these candlestick holders that I purchased from Goodwill for $2 each. They are ceramic and they're not that bad looking. I mostly picked them up because of their shape and the little handle and I think they'd be great. And for these candlestick holders, I'm going to keep it neutral and I'm going to be using this Sunday Tea Chalk Paint by Country Chic Paint. And I'm just going to start painting the entire surface. And I want this to be very opaque so I don't see any of the pattern underneath. I realized that using the paint alone was not going to work so I added some baking soda and created a more thick mixture. That way I can have texture and create that opaque look that I was looking for. I applied two full coats of this mixture letting the piece dry in between coats. Now that I have my first layer on, I am going to go in with a deeper shade of paint and just go around the rim and the base of the candlestick holders. I'm just adding some dimension and a different tone, you know, to give it some contrast. I would have preferred to spray paint these in a high gloss spray paint to make them appear like real ceramic pieces from the oven, but I did not find my clear gloss spray paint in time so I just chose to leave them matte as is with a rough texture. Next up is this terracotta clay pot that I am not a fan of because of the red and green color. I do like the card pattern, so I'm gonna go with a neutral look with this piece and a little bit boho. So first I'm going to be using a little bit of that leftover mixture from earlier just to cover up the red and green, kind of like a primer for my spray paint that I'm gonna be adding to this pot. Now I'm going to tape off the bottom portion of this pot so when I spray paint I can have a ombre effect. So I'm going to be using the Krylon Fusion Paint and Primer in One Matte White Spray Paint and I'm just going to cover the entire top portion in this white spray paint. Once it was dry, I brought it back inside and I removed that tape so I can start painting the bottom portion. I used some of the other paint that I was using for the candlestick holders 
and I just started painting that whole bottom portion in like this tan taupe color. Now here is where I start to really play around with some water and paint to kind of manipulate the flow of the paint to be like a naturally flowing blended color. So I'm using like a lighter tan of paint now and I'm going right above that darker paint and I'm just going up midway. There were some times where I was like, okay, I should just stop here and then another time I'm like, no, I have to keep going. This is gonna be a great masterpiece. So it's up to you how you want to go about it. Here are the colors that I was just playing around with and mixing up as my different shades. And then I went back at the bottom and added a little bit of a darker tone to, you know, really have that ombre look. Now that I have it outside drying, I'm gonna be using some new dried pompous grass that I am so obsessed with because it's the right shape. It's not very large and, you know, over dramatic like usually pompous grass is. It's a very small, um, but yet a lot actually comes in one packaging. And I got this from Amazon and it is so gorgeous and beautiful. And the pompous grass is very, very soft. I was assuming it was going to come very brittle and hard it comes with directions right on the box it's very easy to just put right into your decorative vase all you have to do is give it a little bit of a shake outside so you can get any loose ends and then you have the option to add some hairspray to hold your pieces in place and which is exactly what i did and it works very very well so i'm using this um old hairspray and I'm just spraying very lightly over the entire pompous grass and it is so gorgeous it has the perfect tone color to it very light blonde color but it's not like very brassy tone if you know what I mean like yellowy it's almost has like a gray natural hue to it it's very nice and just so gorgeous so last minute, I realized that it actually come with its own little vase to keep all the pieces together. So when you put it into a vase of your own preference, it doesn't just fall over the place, you know? Although this vase of mine is a little bit too short, so I wouldn't use it for this one. But if you have a taller vase, you have, you know, a vase to keep it together. And as you see, it looks so good with this new boho vibed vase. And for my last thrift flip of today's video, we are going to be using this $10 chair from Goodwill. It has very mid-century vibes. I'm not sure if it's mid-century, but the color of the wood and that pattern definitely gives off that look and i just really like the structure and the bones of this chair it's missing a few screws that i'm gonna have to replace and this fabric is just not it it's definitely time to give her a makeover so first i'm going to be removing the screws but i am using a butter knife because i could not find my phillips screwdriver anywhere and yeah so now that i've removed the back i am going to remove the seating of the chair so i'm going to be honest and tell you that i do not feel like reupholstering this entire chair by stripping the fabric and stripping the foam i'm just going to take this pet deodorant powder that's made for carpets and upholstery anyway, and I'm just going to just load it up on top of these padded portions of the chair, and I'm just gonna let it sit for a few hours to really soak into the fabric. This is gonna remove any pet odor or smoke odor, and just that old odor that
that you usually smell on vintage furniture anyway. So while that's sitting, I am going to disinfect this entire wood chair with some white distilled vinegar and some hot water. And I'm just gonna go over top of the surface and really scrub and make sure that it's free from any, you know, sticky, dirty finger marks and all that stuff. And to cover this chair, I'm using a staple gun and scissors, of course with staples and my choice of fabric, which is Sherpa. I like Sherpa fabric because it replicates boucle fabric, which is trending right now. And quite frankly, this is all I have. So let's get to it. So I'm starting by laying out my fabric and just tracing around how much I am going to need to cut to cover the seat portion of the chair. Once I figure that out, I'm just going to snip my material if you are ever using Sherpa or any type of fabric, honestly, you want to use fabric scissors. It's going to be much easier to cut. I, however, have lost mine and I'm using regular scissors. So this took me quite a while, but I'm going to speed up the process for you. Now that I have the perfect piece cut to size, I can begin to staple the back of the seat. And as I'm stapling, I'm being very careful not to cover up the existing holes where my screws will go to reapply this chair to the wood. And so I'm just trimming some fabric around the corners so I do not cover up those holes because trying to put holes through fur material and you know twisting it's just going to be a mess so you want to keep those parts very exposed once it all has been stapled i'm just going to go around and cut all of the excess material so i can have a very flat surface and now that i have the seat portion complete i can move on to the backing of the chair it's going to be the same process however this piece is a little bit different because the sides are not going to be shown and neither is the bottom so I'm just going to take the material and fold it that way I don't have to have two pieces of material cut if you know what I mean and stitch around I can just fold it around and that way I can just staple the bottom which is going to be facing down anyway and with that faux material you're not going to be able to see any staples which the tricky part is doing the sides which is where I will have to have the material exposed so my screws can go in from the sides. Now I'm going to cut as much fabric as possible from the sides so I can have easy access to those holes and once that fabric has been removed, I can just start stapling around the holes. And I'm going to show you what I mean. Here you can see that there's one hole there and then another hole on the other side. So I'm going to staple all around that and then trim off any extra material. I'm also going to trim off the bottom portion of this backing, which is this part, and then I'll reassemble the chair and we'll be done. And yes, I'm laying on the floor like a mechanic to apply the screws to the bottom of the chair. And now I'm adding the screws to the back portion of the chair. I'm also going to be adding some little felt cushions for the bottom of the chair legs, just as an extra precaution. This chair turned out so amazing and I'm pretty sure it's super expensive somewhere else.
thank you all so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Comment below which was your favorite. I'm pretty sure it's kind of obvious. Remember to click the link in my description box if you're interested in the pompous grass from Amazon. I'll have that listed as well as other home decor videos and thrift flips that I have done previously. You can go watch that right now. And as always, I will see you guys next time.